Hello and welcome to the MMO Concept Art Class Week 4 with your lead instructor, Derek T. Stevens. Well done, Mr. Nelson. It is good to hear from you. I hope everything's well at the Buzz Cave. I know you guys have been working hard on a great many things. I also heard, Mr. Nelson, that uh, you were one hard teacher to please in a coding class. Am I? That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, Richard. Uh, but he said that you definitely make him think, and you push him to the limits, and it's, it's definitely a fun class. And then Richard had the audacity to go, so are you going to take a coding class? I'm like, yeah, as soon as the Pope turns Jewish. No, not going to do it. Can't do it. Don't <laughs> do understand. It. No, you would make so much fun of me, dude. I don't understand that logic stuff. I mean, I wish I did, then I would make a million dollars. Um uh, again, I just want to uh, tilt my hat or tap my hat to you, tilt whatever. Uh, Nelson has got the best of both worlds, super logic, and he's creative. A very rare combination nowadays. So uh, anyway, with that said, welcome to uh, number four MMO class. I'm Derek Stevens. I appreciate you being here. This is to everyone live right now in class. I apologize for being a little bit late. I've been on movie set all day today uh, as a zombie, and things got a little crazy and ran a little late, so I apologize for needing to push your class back, but I, I'm literally still in zombie makeup. I have blood on my face, and it's pretty cool. A little sticky, a little cracky right now, but we're ready to move on. Uh, what the general idea for the MMO class is, um, treating it like a studio. Uh, we have art leads, some great art leads. I have Steve, I have uh, Sid, or Richard. Uh, Ray, Mr. Ray is a brilliant writer, and we're looking for more leads to tackle small bits and pieces of this huge task that we have to create an MMO. Now we have, I like to do affectionately call Mr. Nelson, the egghead, egghead side of everything, because he's coding and he's doing X, Y, and Z, and this side is the creative side. We're, we're not hippies, we're not flower children, but we're creative, right? So, uh, I've been given the task to create uh, the Alethean, I guess, backstory, uh, what motivates them. Uh, Richard, I'm sorry, Mr. Ray had some brilliant ideas, um, and he's going to share some more today. I challenged him with what certain rituals it would take for a young Alethean to become an adult. I'm anxious to hear that. Uh, on my screen right now, I will take uh, first crack and then... We'll move on either to uh, Miss Sydney or Mr. Steve, uh, environment, weapons, or character creation, uh, and we'll talk about what the team has been discussing today. And I encourage, seriously, everybody in here, it's not a class, we're a team. I need, I need input. I want input. If you don't have input, why are you here? This is your chance to make something brilliant and great. So uh, put, put the big boy pants, big girl pants on, and let's do this, okay? We're a team. So... That was my uh, my gavel starting the meeting. In the past, we're talking about Alethians, what their faces are going to look like, what their heads are going to look like, what is the difference about ear shape. And when I did, um, I did six different looks for, for uh, face shapes. I know Mr. Wolf Knightley, this one, number two right here, you kind of like the humanesque nose, and I understand you've talked to Sid, who is lead concept for uh, character creation. I wanted to throw a human-esque nose in here. Even the alien-esque head, I personally feel, and we can debate it, they look a little too much like a night elf. Over here, very flat face, got to the very angular eyes, very gaunt-looking face. I try to keep that for each of them. And again, almost a uh, night elf type ear. Flat face, nose, moving on. Uh, the head angle has moved up. And we have almost like bad ears. Um, I really believe that the variety is a spice of life. You look at humans everywhere in the world. Um, I'm, I'm personally believing that there's doppelgangers out there. There's at least one, maybe two of me out there, but no more than that. So we do need to throw some variety in ear shapes and such. Again here, I'm thinking that the males would probably must have this rigid pattern through their forehead like this, but I wanted to see what a, a female would look like. Gave her a shorter ear, more like the classic elf, and then some tattoo patterns. And then Sig came up with the idea of doing some bands up through here. And again, what that signifies, I'm not for sure yet, because we have to come up with a solid background story. Coming through here, again, different small little headdresses, different styles of ears. This whole area right here would be face paint. 
what was this look like? And who would this be? I'm thinking maybe a shaman or a priest. Finally, last but not least, throw in a different hairstyle in there because we do want to have the Elysians have hair. But uh, we also talked about not wanting to make them look like Marge Simpson, uh, this bouffant hairdo. If you follow along, hold on, let me get this. Okay, yeah, we can do that here. Let me stroke sharp. If this is our hair, I don't want to come up here like this and make her look like she's got a bouffant hairdo. I just, I don't think it'll look good. So, um, Mr. Wolf Knightley, I don't believe in giving credit where credit is due. We both agree that we want to keep this elongated head and maybe instead of having lots of hair, maybe some tufts of hair like this. And again, it kind of looks like piggy tails, but it is an option. Everything is on the table right now. So I want to, uh, Mr. Nelson, we'll do age before beauty uh, and take Mr. Uh, Steve Curtis, if he is indeed here. I think he is, so let's go ahead and jump uh, into him. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Steve? I think it might be, um, there we should hear him now. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you now. How you doing, man? Oh, not too bad. Hello. Can you hear Ty? I can hear Mr. Ty, too. How you doing, Ty? We're, we're, we're testing a new mic setup. Stop being a girl about your elbow. Dude, did you see the elbow on, on Facebook? Yeah. I'm not being a girl. Stop being a girl. I'm not, uh, mm. Yeah. Later on, we're going to talk about discipline, Steve, and your son, okay? <laughs> Later on. No, he got a dose today, so... Rock on. Well, good for him and good for you. Right. And speaking of discipline, because I know you are like the, the end-all, be-all, the cat's meow. I've been bragging to everybody I know about your environmental arts. Uh -oh. Everybody, this is Steve Curtis, okay? He's a man, the myth, the legend from Wisconsin. Uh, he, seriously, he's got a, a tremendous dream. He's got tremendous drive. And I know he's looking for more on his team to be a part of environment and weapons. Um, I'll let you introduce your own team, yada, 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 but I want your credit where credit is due. Ty is his, uh, his third daughter. I'm sorry, son. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ty is a smart aleck who I love to uh, beat badly in Battlefield 3 and Mass Effect 3. He, he does cry like a child, and it's all right. And now he'll probably lie to you and say that I am lying, which is far from the truth. Uh, but with that said, you, I've kind of painted a picture of what Mr. Steve looks like. Uh, he's got some great visions. Uh, we've talked about different uh, zones, different uh, landscapes for these Elysians to, to move about in. And Mr. Steve, I want you to take over right now, share with what you've accomplished. Do a quick recap of last week for those who were not here, and then we'll push forward. How's that? Uh, I have to remember back to last week. Uh, yeah, you kind of do. What do we do? I know I'm, I'm old. I don't remember that stuff. Ah. Um, let me see here. At least you can run an Xbox there. Hey, we're not even going to go there, right, Ty? I can run at Xbox. I just need a little bit of time because I'm old. All right, last week. All right, so uh, last week... Uh, I and my uh, teammate Donald, who has done a tremendous job and has had some really great color schemes. I've been loving the color. He was uh, a little concerned this week about the brashness of some of his colors, but I really, really like it. Those are photos for reference. Do we have any photos that you can share real quick just to recap? Yep, I'm pulling everything up here. I, I see him right now. Alrighty, so we had talked about uh, some underwater levels, mm -hmm. and uh, these are some of the things that Donald threw my way for those, which was awesome. Holy crap on a cracker, Batman. Seriously, those are beautiful. I am not worthy, Mr. Donald. I am not worthy. Enough. Donald Enough. someday is going to be just a magnificent speed painter. You can see the touches already. I can too. His 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 line with his weight is bold. Uh, his marks are intentional, but yet they kind of look like uh, they have some havoc placed. 
those are brilliant. I, I can't wait to start building this darn game, guys. I want to nail the Elysians. I want to make sure that we get a good feel for them. By next week, that's the milestone I want to have. I want to have at least the body type and get the head and ears done so we can start placing these guys in environments. I'm, I'm super stoked. Well done, Donald. Donald also threw in us some uh, landscapes in different areas of the planet, uh, some kind of deserty oasis feels. Let's not draw all over his stuff. And some uh, volcanic feels. Nice. I'm going to skip the third one quick. Another deserty feel. I kind of like the, the yurt feel of the uh, camping he's got going on there. Derek, I expect you to say, what's a yurt? You don't think I know what a yurt is? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then uh, my I personal... can't even spell yurt. No, I can't. Thank and you. And then my personal favorite, uh, he was playing around with something other than earthy blue skies and some really strong dark silhouettes. This was the one I really loved out of the group. You know, exactly because this is an MMO concept art class, we, we can't say that we're going to go with this exclusively right now, but it's amazing with one picture. And you, it may take 100 pictures to get the feel, but you're right. This right here, I mean, I've seen World of Warcraft. It's plain blue skies. Uh, Guild Wars, it's blue skies. I mean, you have some floating rocks here and there. But I would love to personally make something so different and so alien as a landscape and sky like that. I, I love it. I can't say we're going to go with it, but I love it. We will, uh, Mr. Busby has some more time. We'll all, all the leads will sit down and talk with them and say, this is what we're presenting. And what do you think? And then we can give definitive answers to everybody working on the team. I love what he's got. I also want you to show them what you came up with because, we, I mean, we, get to that. We, we talked about it, and it, it's beautiful work, man. And, again, I, I can't emphasize enough. If you guys are interested in environmental work, weapons work, Steve Curtis's lead, you can go to 3dbuzz.com under community, go to design, and there are links there to give you information to contact Steve. And you don't have to be God's gift to this world about being an artist. I need passionate people to be on this team, people who will work and not afraid of work. And with that said, Steve and I have talked a couple times both ways. I'm like, Steve, I really don't like this. I think you need to work on X, Y, and Z. And I have to be man enough to say whenever Steve's like, well, this sucks. He has never said that. He's like, you know, this is cool, but I really like X, Y, and Z over here. And we talk this give and take. So you, you guys are going to have to be big enough as a person and an artist to understand that you need to be like a rhinoceros's bottom, tough and hard all over, because you are going to be criticized. We're going to do it in a loving way. And I want to help you guys and gals grow as much as you can in a team-like environment. So get to 3dbuzz.com and sign up today, and then you'll get a free wig and a free free day supply of kibbles and bits. Brought to you by Steve Curtis. I'm going to hold you to that because i got a cat to feed. Um, okay. Well, scratch that. No pun on cats. All right. Continue, Steve. Um, but, it, yeah, just and based on what uh, Derek was just saying, um, I've done a lot of the classes here at 3D Buzz. I've been around a while. Um, trying to step up to what we're trying to do here, I have probably accelerated my learning in the last few weeks by an order of magnitude compared to before. Um, being in a studio type environment, having deadlines, really makes you step up and start learning your game a little faster. I cannot recommend it enough if you want to do that. I was, you just read my mind. I was going to ask you, why do you think you've stepped up so much? It's, it's because of these deadlines, isn't it? Um, the deadlines is a big part. Um, Sharing artwork and ideas, you know, it, it gets your head rolling. I, I keep getting yelled at at work by my partner at my regular job because I'm always like, he's like, hey, you need to do this thing. And I'm like, what? Mountains? What? You know, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not even there. I'm here 24-7 with that running through my head. And it, it really forces you to, uh, to uh, get sat down somewhere and get those ideas out of your head and you know, when you get them down there and you're like, God, I really don't like that, it makes you run out and start looking for ways 
to do it better. Um, a lot of the things I wanted to do, I couldn't do very well, so I spent the entire weekend pouring over Photoshop tutorials to figure out how to do digitally what I used to do by hand when I was in school. And I just, I can't recommend it enough. It is a great way to learn very fast. Well, you know, speaking of tutorials and Photoshop and this and that, uh, my, my art classes have not been, say, so much a, uh, a Photoshop tutorial class. I'm not an expert by any means. I know some cool tricks, but uh, we're talking to, to, to Buzz, Mr. Jason Busby himself, and I'm hoping to help tie into the MMO class. I, I'm hoping soon we're going to be able to announce that I will be teaching an anatomy physiology class, you know, to learn to draw bodies, female and male, maybe like a four to six week course, immediately followed by fantasy art class. So that will help tie into the MMO class where we can get some serious juices flowing. And because, you know, let's face it, we had the, the drawing 101 class, which was awesome. I mean, we had almost 90 students at one time, and it was great. The sci-fi class, we had a good turnout, but I, I want better. I want more. I want to push it to the next level. So I'm hoping if we can get everything sorted out in time, very soon we'll be able to announce uh, the, 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 the anatomy class. And through that, I'm hoping that Sid will get an outpour of people wanting to help out. And then with the fantasy art class, I want to cover everything from creature designs, from environment stuff. And then we're going to have one hell of a huge team. That is my hopes. Uh, thank you for bringing up the tutorial thing. I'm going to shut up now. Seriously, I'm done. Zip. <laughs> Continue, Steve. Uh, and also to emphasize again in talking with Donald this week, he had some concerns about his color palettes and his tendency to be very, very bold, and I immediately said, no, knock it off, just keep doing what you're doing, it's great, I tend to work in very dark gray palettes, and having you do that really helps feed me to change up some color, which you will see shortly. And so then we moved on to this week, and let me see. And uh, Donald threw me this. I uh, love that one. Is Donald in here? Mr. Nelson, is Donald available? Uh, he is here, yes. Let's kick him on mic and let him talk about his work. Sure. He has been mic'd. Hey, Donald! What's going on? What's up, baby? <laughs> How's it feel to be the, the man of the hour? Awesome. I love it. I'm loving what you're doing, man. And, and okay, and for those who want to ask questions, and there better be a few because otherwise I will scream and kittens will cry. We'll get some, to some questions in a minute. What I want people to do is be able to ask Donald and uh, Steve specific questions about environment stuff. But, but please tell us what's going on with you and your thought pattern with this, this piece of art here. Oh, this one was awesome. I was redoing the uh, volcano thingy I had going on. And I really liked the idea of sending it rocks. So I was kind of just making the volcano, and it turned out looking like a face. I was like, holy crap, this is I awesome. thought you did that on purpose, because I, I can see the face in there. Oh, I got a picture I didn't send to uh, Steven. So I'll have to show you all that, and something else turned out just like that as well. It's really cool. Oh, that's right. You're supposed to have a surprise tonight. I'm very excited about that. Yes. I am. It has surprises, happy accidents happen every now and then that you couldn't even plan for, and that, that's, that's awesome when that happens, man. Yeah, but uh, the little arc going across, that could be like the uh, entrance to this. Maybe it's on top of a mountain, and the only way to get to it is that one entrance. So I threw in a little bit of a gameplay perspective, too. I like that. Love it. And the rocks are looking really alien-like, which is what I really was going for how they, they kind of curve more to one side and have a lot of sharp points. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty I'm, much it. I was really loving this one. Um, I also love the other one you threw at me, which is why I'm so excited for the one you're hiding. Um, you also <laughs> threw this one up. Ah, yes. This one, uh, I was going kind of for a sandy look at first, and it turned out pretty good. Uh... I got the perspective down good, and I really wanted the rocks to kind of be different and just have a little growth on them. 
maybe show a little vegetation and then i then the waterfall coming down and it didn't really have a source i was like huh how can i make this look better so i figured a geyser so maybe they could have some kind of water system where the way it comes out of the ground is actually from geysers more often than you know just coming down a mountain Real quick, I, I want to point this out because water is not an easy animal to to render by any means. But with, let's see, what we do? I see like five shades of different blues and some whites in there. You did a really good job with that water, and oh, yeah. I want anyone in here who wants to do environment. I mean, I, I want them to team up with you guys. This is this is really nice. Water is a hard animal to draw. You did a really good job, man. Oh, it took me forever. <laughs> But uh, I think I redone the rocks about five times on this one, just trying to figure out the forms and everything. And now it's Steve's turn. Alrighty, um, was just uh, doodling around in kind of cartoony fashion with sketchbook, thinking of what some alien plant life might look like. Hey, you know, that's the thing we got to think about. And real quick, before we start on this, Mr. Nelson. Uh, go ahead and see if there's anybody has any questions that wants to talk about environment stuff that we've just gone over or some ideas that they have. Sure. If anybody wants to uh, jump in on the call, go ahead and just raise your hand. And there be somebody. Nobody? No, guys. Nobody's raising their hand. Well, I guess that means that you guys nailed it. Yes. I won't bite. I may make fun of you, but I will not bite. Uh, I need ideas. Listen, these guys that we have, Steve and Donald, are great, but it's your job to push them to be even better. So I need you guys to man up, soldier up, ask some tough questions. I'm going to ask some tough questions. All right, here I go. You ready? What is your favorite color? Where do babies Ooh, come oh, from? Green. Oh, green. <laughs> oh. Babies uh, come from aliens. That, that's why I thought they have a larvae in them. Okay, we've covered that. That's great. And and before you start talking about plant life, Steve, um, is this going to be like a hostile alien environment? Or are you seeing like death around every corner? Um. Well, I, I think in terms of games, gameplay is much like story. That that should be a bit of a roller coaster. Um, you know, the, I, I think overall the general plan, and I agree, was to have a fairly hostile environment. I like that. But because what we have not talked have about yet, not, you know? true. Because what we've not talked about yet is like the human faction. Um, Suppose you land on this alien-esque planet. I mean, in a lot of ways, okay, we're creating the Alethians, the alien-esque culture right now, but we're, we're humans, okay, and we're going to land on this alien planet. And it's from our point of view, like, what does this plant do? Uh, you do, do you eat it? No, no, I don't eat it. You touch it. I don't want to touch it. Uh, I think it would be very interesting to see what plants. And, you know, who knows, maybe some of these plants will have healing properties, and, you know, we'll help with armor. And anyway, tell me about your plan ideas. Um, it's no really specific ideas. I just want to play around with some colors and shapes. Um, some of these are based a little bit on uh, earthly type things, but maybe enlarged or deformed. Um, you know, we're, we're already asking them to buy that we're on this entirely alien planet. So I want them to look alien, but I also want there to be hints of things you see on Earth so that it's believable. And if I really want to believable, I probably shouldn't have drawn these in a cartoon fashion. But um. No, well, okay, here, here's my only gripe to you, okay? You ready for this live in front of God and everybody? Um, uh, plant number one, I don't know if it's a tree, because I don't have uh, an Elysian or a human scale next to it. What I would suggest next time is to draw the silhouette of a human to scale. Um, again, because I, I picture this, that might be like a huge-ass coconut tree of some sort. Well, and, and in my head it kind of was, but then I was like, but maybe not. So, 
Maybe it's four inches tall. I don't know. Well, that is my suggestion. So we can get to start getting scale and idea of scale. And remember the idea that we're going for right now are the Elysians are kind of like uh, whatever. <laughs> Stop it. Stop talking to me like that. The dog's making fun of me. I don't know if you guys can understand that, but I can. Uh, the Elysians are uh, like night elves. They're, they're that tall and humanesque or and that's my idea. Maybe we can make them shorter. I don't know. But uh, we're going to have to have a, a scale factor. And I can't wait to uh, pin Sid to the ground about what's going on with her and her thoughts. Because <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to pin her down hard and make her say uncle. Alrighty. And then uh, this week I was doing some more environment work. I, I haven't really messed with weapons too much yet. So anybody who wants to get in on that, by all means, leap in. I've been kind of waiting to see how the characters develop and see where that takes me in terms of what kind of weapons they might be using. Um, so I've been playing with environments. Uh, this was just a quick speed painting I was doing right before class. Dude, I didn't see this one. Yeah, it's, it's like 20 minutes ago. Uh, That's why I didn't see it, because I was getting bashed in the face with the fire extinguisher and getting my yeah. elbow all screwed up. Ty, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I really like this, man. What is your thought process? Are, okay, is this is this glowing? And is that water next to it? And is it? Um, yeah, that, that was uh, a, a lot of these. I, I'm trying to uh, do double duty and teach myself something. You said duty. I, I said duty. I'm sorry, go ahead. And teach myself something while producing uh, work for the class. Uh, this was a bit of a little bit of a. Uh, Speed painting, because a lot of my work tends to take many more hours than it often would for people. So I was just playing around. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's stop right down. there. No, no, we got to stop right there. Okay, because you're comparing yourself to this supposed ninja who can do what you're doing in like five seconds to whatever time. Oh, he's it's, out there. He, he or she is out there. But I want you to be, I guess, I guess the feeling I want, to go for is everybody that I want to uh, to be a part of this I'm sure they feel the same way that you guys aren't alone that something like this detail that Steve just did you know what it may take you several hours it may take you a couple of days to do and that's alright I don't want you to think that I just need a little you know, like blink my eyes spit and pass some gas and boop it's here it doesn't always work that way but look what Steve has accomplished if you guys are willing to work that hard I'm willing to like cater to you and help you out in any way, shape, or form I can. So I'm glad that you're telling us that it takes that long, Steve. I don't want people to be under the misconception that Steve just woke up one day, rolled out of bed, and said zip, zip, and it was done. Oh, God, no. I, the, the last one I'll show took me the entire weekend. It was, I don't know, like 12 or 13 hours or something to get it done. Um, and and, and I'm not bashing myself or anyone else in terms of how long it takes to get stuff done, but we're concepting, so I just see being able to speed paint as another skill set, so I wanted to play with that. And uh, just uh, get used to throwing down color really fast and seeing where that takes you. And um, You know, when I started this, I picked a color palette, and I had no idea what I was going to do. Well, let me ask you something from a technical standpoint, because I'm interested, and if I'm interested, hopefully somebody else is interested. What brush did you use to make the, the edge of the leaves? Was it, uh, was it an airbrush? Um, or was I, show us on here I, on I, the uh, screen? Yeah, I'm really interested to know, too, because I have a horrible time with trees. And, and Bob Ross will be freaking proud of you, dude. Um, there's, a, there's a guy... <laughs> There's a guy out there named Jonas DeRoe, who is a professional concept artist. And uh, tool around, look look for his site and tool around, and he will let you have his brushes. Really? Yeah, which was kick-ass. These, these are the brushes he uses. This is like a Nelson thing. Nelson can make a brush that you just do two strokes, and it like makes an orc. <laughs> It's called the Make Orc Brush. Make Nelson, orc. is this true? Um, I can't see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. I can't wait to see you again, dude. So, uh, like, uh, treetops, this is the brush for that. And I'll just paint on here quick. It, 
does an awesome job of painting the tops of trees right now. That's my right. problem. I tried to go in and detail every single one. Yeah, forget that. Here's here's <laughs> his just dead trees brush. Awesome, very fast. Uh, forest, pine forest, like you see back here. Dude, this rock saw. Okay, listen. Here so we go. Kill every brush you can find from every professional out there. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, this is not a shortcut. This is a tool. I uh, part of me. I, I feel like frosted many weeks. Part of me is like, you know, the frosted side says, this is cheating. You can't do that. You need to do X, Y, and Z. You have to do yours. And then the little kid of me is like, we're having fun. That's what art should be. It should be fun. And if there are brushes out there like this to utilize a tool to make it fast. Man, listen, if you want to be in this industry, it's all about speed. I personally right now, I'm on three comic books in a month and uh, anywhere from two to three video games. And it's hard to keep, God is it hard. It all comes down to speed. This is a tool. Listen to Mr. Steve. Uh, Steve, if you would, uh, make a link put it in 3D Buzz, uh, where you got these brushes. I'll try to hang it up again. I was tooling around, and I'm not entirely sure. I just remember his <laughs> name, but I will find them. Uh, and see if I can get, well done, fact, man. I'll see if I can start pulling some uh, some just uh, downloadable brushes from these. You, you have to remember, I mean, this, this guy threw that out there and said, this is what I use. Go ahead and have them. It, it's to me it's akin to you've got a flat tire and you're out there yanking on it trying to pull it off and a professional manic mechanic comes along and says uh i have this awesome wrench would you like to use it well, of and course you say you hell's yeah <laughs> yeah so when this guy says hey i made these awesome awesome brushes would you like to use them i say hell's yeah so, amen brother amen and ty would say you're acting like a girl dad <laughs> And then tell my dad's a man. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia six up for you. Thank you very much, Bunkhole. All right, go on. All right, and so uh, playing around with the environment tutorials. Uh, and some of the stuff. I, I, I really never could do mist or fog very well, so you'll see a lot of mist and fog. Because that's okay, fun. here's a, a, a trick and a tip for you. You ready? You ready? Hit me. Bam. Here we go. You got your spot black. You got it going on, right? And what I, I literally do, because I don't have time to make my own, like, fog tool brush, whatever, I will Google fog images. I will take those images of fog, and then I will cut, and I will paste on top of my black image, and then I will paste or throw down the opacity, and with an eraser, I will just come in and start erasing just percent by percent by percent, and it gives it a cool, cool effect. It is no fuss, it's no muss, uh, it's made there for you, and if you Google fog, you're going to see different uh, light sources, you're going to see different consistencies, you're going to see different depths of it. Um, again, what we're talking about, this is like a business, and this is money, time is money, Use the tools that you're uh, that that you can, and this may like be a mum word. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of tutorials online like oh we have to do X Y and Z. That's great, I love that, but let's get real. Time is money, and Google is a tool. And if I can fake or bake a uh, I guess what you want to call it, a texture, I'm gonna go yep. I'm, I'm gonna do that. And you, Steve, you and I were talking about that. One of the, uh, the concept pieces, the first things you did when we were talking about doing an MMO class, uh, you got some pieces of like fish skill and stuff like that from the internet, and you used the. Uh, okay, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna bash me. Is it the warp or wrap tool? <laughs> warp. Warp. You use the. I don't like that, but I'm gonna say it. Use the warp tool to your advantage by picking scales up and then you can fade it you can use different uh, I guess filters on it uh, highlights you can just you can do all sorts of things the curves again if you want to be a purist hey that's awesome that's great uh, 
one of my my guys I like to quote and I love and I love to hate. His name is Chris, Christopher Shy, and his artwork is he takes photographs, and he'll have like maybe a thousand different eyeballs and maybe a thousand different headshots and hand shots and this, and he'll mix and match and then paint on top of, and his work is stellar. He's selling. He's worked for Marvel. He was a concept artist uh, on Friday the 13th, worked for Marilyn Manson, doing this this sort of thing. And he's not his own tricks. I don't know. I wish I did know. Believe me, I wish I knew. But a lot of people started bashing him, like, you're not a purist. He's like, you know what? If you want to bash me for using a computer because it's a tool, it's just like a pen, it's just like Indian ink, it's just like using an airbrush, it is a tool. I, maybe not a purist. I may not making my own airbrush tools. I may not be mixing my own colors. Use well, what I, works. I it's think if you talk to almost any actual professional concept artist out there, you will not find any of them that have never used textures in their work. They do it all the time. Exactly. Some of them start off with the texture and just go from there, like Fang Zhu. He's a really good concept artist. Dude, I love that guy. Yeah, that One guy day. awesome work. Yes. One day I'm going to buy him a drink. Uh, give me another 10 years. Uh, let's say I'll be like almost 80. Uh, then I might be able to be worthy enough to kiss the dirt on his boots, okay? Uh, but we're going to get there. I'm not going to give up. That's what um, I'm shooting for. And speaking of those guys, Fang Zhu, um, Jonas DeRoe, and uh, a guy named Darkin with two A's. Uh, great guys to look up for uh, inspiration and technique. They do just some amazing concept work. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do want to say that right here. We're 3dbuzz.com. I love buzz. Uh, but I also want to say there's some other tools, some other avenues out there. I encourage everybody who's listening here, Google this crap. YouTube it. Find it. Utilize it. You know what? You come back to me. You come back to Buzz. You come back to Nelson and say, I've got some great ideas. And then we share amongst our community here. Because there's... I, mean, I can't even tell you how many people have gone in from 3D Buzz to go on to great, huge endeavors. Buzz is a, the, the, the launching pad for so many people for success stories. So I really want us to share their ideas. And I, Derek T, too good to be true. That's not the real T meaning. I'll tell you. Uh, but I'm not the end-all, be-all concept artist. I'm just the guy in the position that's been blessed. I got some talent. I want to be humble. There's a lot of people a lot better than I am. But I'm going to continue to work hard for myself and work hard for the 3D Buzz team to give you guys what I didn't have in the past. So you guys can leapfrog me, and maybe I'll be working for you guys one day. Well, I mean, the bottom line is, whoever you're learning from, whatever talents you're learning, that pool is never going to fill up. You can throw as many people and influences in there as you want. It will never get too full. Just take from wherever you can find what you want, and whatever idea is in your head, just look around until you find somebody doing something like it and learn from it. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter whether they're professionals. If you learn, that's all that matters. Amen. Reverse engineer. All right. Anyway, continue, Steve. All righty. And then the last one, which is the one I really loved, was this Me one. too. <laughs> Me too. And, and that one is probably closest to how I actually envision this world being very hot and tropical and steamy and jagged and dangerous. Danger is my middle name. <laughs> the T is silent. True. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, smart like. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down like this. Wicca, wicca, wicca. I'm such a nerd. I love the mist. I love the hard edges of, of the rocks that you have there because I know they're there. I see this and I'm like, oh, crap, I don't want to climb this. This is going to suck to get all the way up there. I love the water. I can almost see reflection. Uh, your use of negative space to positive space, it, it's beautiful, man. Uh, this is, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is like an 8.5. There's not a lot more that I'd like to see you do. i like to see you maybe push some darks darker. We talked about that. Some yep. lights lighter to make things pop. 
but even their grass. Uh, or I love it. Well and, done. And again, this is a case where um, some of that is hand painted, but there was also a lot of texturing with it. Um, Nothing wrong with that, man. Well, one of the things I learned was grab a texture, throw it on there. Never just leave the texture because that part looks like a photo. Paint over the texture. It will take you places. And you'll still be able to see it through it. You know, I, I got kind of a short story. I may have told this uh, in a couple other classes, but uh, when I was in graphic art design at SIU Carbondale, Illinois, home of 101.5 CILFM. I was a DJ before. But anyway, uh, we were doing airbrush in class, and I, the teacher and I just, we did not connect. I'm not going to say he sucked. I personally felt that, but I don't want to say that. Um, so one of my buddies was an airbrush artist in the mall. I, and I don't think they have, like, airbrush people in the mall anymore. But before, they like, you stop by and they airbrush you a T-shirt. And I learned more from him in, in, like, four hours. And I did all semester in class. So our final project, we had, like, two weeks to do. And then I nailed out a Boba Fett airbrushed in, like, three days. I literally had all the rest of the time just to kill. And I did not get an A on that project. And I was so PO'd. I'm like, why did I get an A on this? I'm like, look, it's spot on. I mean, it was awesome. And my instructor said, well, uh, I didn't show you any of the techniques that you used. <laughs> I was yeah, mad. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you showed me or didn't show me. It's the end result. And it goes back to what you were saying, Mr. Steve. You threw some textures on there, but you didn't stop with that. The end result is what you have in front of you. Yeah. It is the end. This is currently my pride and joy in my budding career. So. You know what, though? Look at the top now. You're going to top it next week because I'm going to make sure that you do. That's the portfolio piece right there. Indeed. 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 Yeah. Oh, there was something else. I wanted to uh, there's your manga eyes. Well, thank you. <laughs> so I am actually working on that. Now let me find... Uh, uh, based on... This is a work in progress based on uh, what Donald was doing. He kind of inspired me with his face cave. Face cave, that's so... Dude! So we're working on this right now. Here's my first thought. Freaking awesome. Looks too human. If it's going to be on this indigenous world of aliens, we may want to elongate ahead. Uh, yeah, to me. All of all of this stone is just a texture thrown on there. I haven't worked with it at all yet to carve it away. Or this is awesome, man. I, I got goosebumps. I want to play this game so bad. I need yeah, help, I people. Pay. I need some free. We we need some help. We need team members. Yep. Uh, hey, Nelson, you there? I am. All right, so uh, just give me a guesstimation. Uh, say we get like uh, 200 people working on this from the art end, and how soon can we make this game? Uh, <laughs> that's going to depend on quite a few factors. <laughs> just guess. Can we get it done in a couple weeks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish, I wish the projects worked like that. I know they don't. And like I said before, man, this... It's not a sprint. It, it is a long distance race. But man, dude, Steve, I love this shit. I'm sorry. I love this stuff. Edit that out, let's, let's ask Nelson a question that maybe you can't answer. Was there originally a time frame that Buzz wanted to see it done in? Not really. Um, there wasn't. Originally, it was going to be going on for a couple of years, and that was the idea. Just on In two years, kind of what I thought it would take to do it. But right. Sounds about right for a game. Yeah, and if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. And what's, okay, I'm going back to 2004, all right? I'm at the Renaissance Center in Dixon, Tennessee, 2004, learning Maya. I get hooked up with Epic Games, and uh, the polygon count had to be like 3,500 for a character for Unreal Tournament 2004 doing like modeling. And then it jumps from 3,500 polygons to Unreal Technology for, uh, for Gears of War. And they have the, the, these huge models. It was like a sword I got to see for the first time ever. It was like behind the scenes. Um, like a million polygons. How does your machine work like this? Well, they introduced normal mapping. 
okay, compare from 2004 to what we have right now, things are getting easier for people to create. I'm not saying it's just like, you know, whoo, there's the make cool button right there. It still takes artistic skill and integrity and blah, 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 blah. But within two years, I really believe it's going to be a lot easier for us to communicate massively out to everyone out there and take that energy and create an entire freaking game. Absolutely. Hoorah. This is very mm -hmm. exciting stuff, man. Steve, I love it. And I have Donald, so we got it covered. <laughs> You've got it covered. Oh, yeah. But you can use more. Absolutely. We will absolutely take more. Definitely. Mr. Nelson, can you open up for questions? Yep, uh, we're always open for questions, um, but I do. I don't see any hands up, and I don't see any in the question panel. So, if you guys want to be involved with this discussion, just remember raise your hand. I've got to show my surprise. All right, let's see your surprise. All right. Is it bigger than the baby's arm, and can it fit in the bread box? Yes. yes. Brilliant. All right, who are we switching over to? Uh, Donald. Surreal. Steve, well done, buddy. Uh, here we go. All righty. Can you see it? I can see it. Is it a painting? <laughs> or a drawing? Well, it depends what brush you used. It's Photoshop. <laughs> it looks like it's uh, like a mountainside. Yeah. Okay. Here is the, oh, here, let me make my brush a little bigger. This little head here is the thing that kind of just formed out of nowhere. I was kind of doing a little cliffside thing, and mm -hmm. it just ended up coming up to be like a dragon's head. But the idea is, like, a main city for the game is here, and you come up on a cliff overlooking this little grotto, and you can see pretty much the whole city as well as maybe like a little training area over here. And I took the floating island thing and kind of thought, what if we did like floating symbols around the city? Maybe it could give it enchantments to anybody that entered the city or whatever. That's a good idea. And yeah, uh, uh, floating, uh, floating gems. That are inscribed. That would be cool. And then once we get some symbols down, we can. Uh, I've done little squiggly lines over here on the side of the mountain. So maybe we could do like forming little symbols or something on the side of cliffs. Some very good ideas. Loving it. And of course, there's a giant bridge with little guys sitting there. That's this guy right there. Hello, little guy. <laughs> little statues. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm planning on actually painting it. Probably take a few days. However long it takes, man. I like it. Oh, yeah. Well done. I like your thought pattern, too. I like how it reads as a camera or you know, it is a canvas from uh, left to right. Yeah. It reads well. Well done. Proud of you. And again, guys and gals, raise your hand in the forums if you have any questions. If not, forever hold your peace, but this is your chance to get involved in the game and the gaming process. If not, you eat poop. <laughs> That's all I got to not, say. Not the delicious kind, either. No, the poopy poop kind. Oh. <laughs> all right. I was so hoping for the delicious poop. It's magically delicious. Uh, with that said, well done, gentlemen. Again, go to 3dbuzz.com. Uh, find yourself under uh, community, then design. And we have uh, each thread clearly labeled 2013. Uh, get a hold of Steve. Uh, be one of Donald's teammates. And let's make some cool environments and weapons. Uh, Mr. Steve, do you have any weapons you wanted to show or was it all environments this week? All environments this week. I've been kind of waiting to see where the uh, where the character design goes. Gotcha. And then we'll start. I have some ideas out there, but I kind of want to see if they're going to flow with what you guys are doing. Roger that. 
right with that, we'll give uh, Mr. Donald a big hand and Mr. Steve a big hand. <sighs> well done. Well done. I need my other art lead, Miss Sydney uh, Curtis. Is she available? Well, I don't know if she is, but I'll unmute her anyway. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Miss Sid. So. Hey, I want to show you something because you have my screen right. Everyone has my screen right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, in between bashing the head and my elbow. And listen, hey, seriously, girl, I'm I'm not. You know what? Your brother's like I'm a I'm a girl. I'm not a girl. You're a girl. You're tough. You can handle stuff. Maybe he should say I'm a baby, not a girl. Okay, my elbow has like uh, it's basically a bowling ball I'm carrying. <laughs> Sorry, Dude, picture. Didn't it look gross? I mean, seriously, it freaking hurts. And your brother's like, just that being a girl. Wait, wait. Anyway, on set today, I did this. Um, I've been doing Dragons for Heavy Cat Studio. Uh, and anyway, I, I want to stare very far away from, uh, what is it, uh, Avatar. So mm -hmm. if it looks too Avatar-ish, we'll, we'll talk about it. But I'm thinking about different mounts for our, our little Ethians, Ethians right here. I like his little crooked smile. I'm not happy with the figure here. But you know, you got zombie makeup and blood on you. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, I got Ty, thank you very much. It's approved by Ty. Game over. Everyone go home. We're done for the night. <laughs> I like it. I don't remember what, like all the avatar creatures looked like i'd have to like look that up and go back over it it's been no, too no, long don't but... don't don't go over there don't look at it up <laughs> do not do that because do you know this this dude named james cameron he's got some serious chops and serious money you don't want anything to do with that stuff we're gonna make it our own right g and, and really you don't want to do that because even if you look at it and go okay i don't want to do this you just put it in your head and it's going to show off <laughs> Like, if I tell you not to think about a pink giraffe, you're thinking of a pink giraffe right now. I'm thinking of a purple giraffe, thank you. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but you thought of a giraffe. Mm, thank you, Mr. Steve. All right, well, okay, you see my, my six heads, and you see my little animal-esque looking thing here. Um, by next week. And you and I will contact each other by Wednesday, and we're, we're going to talk hardcore. I want us to nail down what the Elysians are going to look like, whether they're going to have a flat face in front, whether they're going to have a nose. I want to talk about their ear shape and tattoos, but I want a body shape. I want something mm -hmm. permanent that we can, we can assign so we can start actually building armor for this. Do you agree? Hoorah, all right, girl. Uh, Mr. Nelson, if you can take her screen, I want you her to show her thought pattern this week and uh, what she's got from her team this week. So, Miss Sid, S-Y-D, not S-I-D, as I used to make fun of you, you have uh, to come. Also, <laughs> right. recap, also recap a little bit of last week. Yep, um, this was last week I was kind of working with headdresses and stuff uh you know i did that water trick kind of as an idea for an elemental theme chelsea played around with some hair and some hair headdresses as well and uh wolf also did some stuff of his own i don't have that on my computer though but he i think he's better at the jewelry work than i am he was brilliant at the jewelry work and they he was. they were very nice very pretty very chic mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah that was last week um this week i didn't get a lot of finished work done i feel like i didn't do nearly as much but i did a lot of base work do that i'm gonna upload to buzz after this is over okay but um this first one was just kind of another hair idea. I had a friend on Facebook who was doing some modeling thing called Battle of the Hair, and I saw some pictures. I was like, her head is kind of shaped like the aliens were drawing. That's funny. <laughs> so I messaged her. I was like, can I use one of your pictures to help me draw something? She's like, yeah, whatever. And I virtually turned her into an alien, kind of trying to do more of the head shape, making it more noticeable. Okay, let's, let's analyze this and let's break it down, okay? Um, I'm not even concerned about the colors or the jewelry. I like the hair. I want to concentrate on the face. 
what do you like and what do you not like about this picture? About the face or the picture yeah, altogether? the face. I... Nothing wrong with it. It's amazing to me. What did you say? Amazing. He said there's nothing wrong with just saying it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this again. Um... I don't know, maybe, it. I mean, I do see where she is kind of human-like, but in my mind, it's not too bad. I Maybe the ears, because we have agreed that they're kind of elf-like, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that you are managing to still make the females very attractive. Despite I agree. Yeah, I want okay. to be pretty. As a dude... Because, you know, I'm a dude who likes <laughs> hot chicks. I'm not going to lie. I like hot chicks. Who doesn't? I mean, there's a lot of fat, smelly chicks out there. There's like those fat, smelly guys, all right? But if we're going to play in a virtual world, I don't really want to see fat, smelly chicks. I want to see hot, beautiful. And beauty is the eye of the beholder before I dig a hole too deep, okay? I don't want to say that. Uh, the only concern that I have you and I need to discuss, and, and everyone's welcome. We, we can take questions, and I encourage us. The nose. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not so concerned about the ears and the lips. They're humanist. The ears can be elf-like. The, the, the head, we've all agreed, is elongated. It can be at different angles. The nose. Are we going to go for a flat nose, or are we going to go for a humanesque nose? Because right now, she almost looks like a cat. Okay. Um. A, a feline nose. Well, if you hold on here, I, I personally, I like the nose I've been doing, but I mean, why wouldn't I? I kept to it. Because um, Nelson, I mean, not Nelson, Wolf Nelson. had the idea yeah. of having no bridge at all, and I tried a couple options, and I wasn't very happy with any of them, but I, you know, tried it. Okay, listen. This is the essence of concept art. A lot... <laughs> Probably for every one drawing that you see that's supposed to be a finished concept piece, there's 20 to 30 drawings that you're not going to see that didn't mm -hmm. make their cut. So that's not finished enough. Because back in the day, concept art was exactly like this. But then concept art became a finished painted piece, blah, blah, blah. Concept art to me, and my, my ideology at this point in the game for 3D Buzz, quick sketches like this. These are quick reads. I can tell the bridge of the nose, number one, it's down low. A uh, very Romanesque looking nose, number two. Uh, wow, I got my face punched in, looked like a Persian cat, number three. Uh, uh, but you know what? These are quick, easy, small reads. And even the shape of the head, this is what we need. Um, and I, I want us to agree that uh, by next week, between you and I and Mr. Wolf and anybody else who's interested... Uh, we email, get in touch as soon as possible. Let's come up with three different heads uh, because I know the game when it starts out, and Mr. Nelson can confirm or deny or deny to confirm. Uh, we don't. We may not have as many models as we want for a lot mm -hmm. of choices. So we may need to have a really dynamic or dramatic one-way middle ground and di or di 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 dynamic the other way sort of thing where they can mix and match. Mm -hmm. I think you've got something good going on. So what do you like? What knows? Um, out of these ones right here on the screen? Uh -huh. Um, I would say the ones I like the more for the more alien look. I think I like the last one in the top row, or maybe not so alien-like, I like the middle one in the bottom row. Well, I, I can agree. Can you pull up that previous painting you did? Yep. This one? Yep. Now, I'm looking at that nose and seeing the little bit of nostril starting to cut up at the bottom. And I was thinking about the six that you put up, Derek. And what if you took that a little bit human-esque but flattened nose, but you ran those nostril slits in the front more like you drew yours. So rather than coming out the bottom like they do in a human nose, they're actually 
right there on right. the bridge. Ah, a good compromise. I like that. I think that would be a very nice idea because it would give. And again, it just goes to back to human nature. We we like what we like. We like what we see. That we understand what we see. This way, it'd be a good compromise. It would look humanesque, pretty hot and sexy, but it would have a nice alien look to it as well. And particularly in game, when you actually walked up to someone and you were looking at that nose straight on, those nostrils are really going to sell an alien look. Well done, Mr. Yeah. Steve. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Well done. Ty, you may let your father sleep tonight without throwing cold water on him. <laughs> I'll try. I know. It's very tempting. If I was closer to Wisconsin, you and I would both throw water on him. But anyway, I digress. What else do you got for me today, Sid? All right. Um, Dad had uh, mentioned the idea of having the ears in a different position than you would normally imagine them, and I only tried putting them up a little higher than normal, and I really don't think it made that much of a difference, but, you know, tried it out. Again, that's the, the essence of concept art. It's just trying... And for every, like I said, 20, only one's going to make a cut. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad. If you didn't try it, we wouldn't know. But I agree yeah. with you. It really doesn't make a huge difference. No. All right. And I also tried out some different ear positions and ear styles. Hmm. 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 I'm determining what ear I like to nibble on. And, uh, hmm. I like this, the second middle one. Second middle one? Or the number one bottom one. I don't know. I mean, Mr. Nelson? Um, yeah. I got a question for you. Yo. Now, uh, for making things where we can customize the models for the game, do we need to literally come in and customize that would be like one, three, four, five, six, seven models? Or could you just have one base model and seven, seven different ears to it? Well, typically for this, it would just be seven different ear meshes. Okay. Would that be difficult to, to code in game where you can choose this and that? No, not particularly, though a massive amounts of customization isn't going to be something that's going to be a, pr a priority early on. Right. So um, I guess we need to talk to the age heads, the smart guys, uh, and they are creative as well, and I love them. And you mix them up with ketchup. I like eggs and ketchup, but I digress. Um, I, I guess I need you to talk to your peeps how much of customization that we can have. If you can come back and tell us we can have four bits of customization. You can customize like the size of the head, the shape of the head, and the ears, and like boob size and legs or height. That way we as artists can start curtailing what will be comfortable sure. and doable for you guys. Will that be good? Mm -hmm. I love how we're working together. It just made me all fuzzy inside. Stop it. It made me all happy. I'm a little loopy because I hurt my elbow today and I'm, I should <laughs> Are you sure it's your elbow you hit? Yeah. I needed to get the ba bash in the face several times. But thank you, Mr. Nelson. Well, if um, okay, I give you permission to beat your son, by the way. Go ahead, Nelson. Uh, if this is a good time, it's uh, been about an hour. Okay, okay we'll, we'll take a, a five to ten minute break, get a drink, use the bathroom. And when we come back, you who are there, we need some questions. And let's talk some stuff out. How's that? Bro hug to everybody. Bro <laughs> hugs. Hit bro hugs. And we're back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had a great break. Uh, get yourself a drink. You uh, use the potty, whatever you had to do. Stretch your legs. Uh, we're going to come back uh, with uh, Miss Sid Curtis. That is S-Y-D for those who are paying attention and uh, taking information and willing to send birthday cards out to the homeless. Uh, <clears throat> Sid, 
Uh, let's discuss this painting right here, but after this painting, we're going to try to go back to the other people in class because I want feedback from them. So you people who have not spoke, have not talked, shame on you, number one. Number two, be prepared to speak because we're going to take over your computer any second now. Send your thoughts on this one. Go. Um, I had discussed last time how I wanted to do a Lava themed person. Um, this was the female idea I had where maybe with the magic she could kind of throw lava at other people. And I actually <clears throat> have this one, which I did get to finish because I was doing it right before class. Did this one thinking more of like once you come out of a volcano, the lava would harden and create armor and be kind of a big baddie idea. That's a cool idea. That's a very cool idea. And it's making me want to really talk to Mr. Ray about what his idea of coming up to adulthood, because that would be kind of a cool idea. Well, son, congratulations. You're now 13 years old, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a really big feast and see that big volcano up there. Right, right. We're going to traipse up there. We'll look over. We're going to spit in it because that's fun. Then I'm going to show you in the volcano, and if you survive and climb back out, woo, you're a man, and you've got big volcano ash and rock around you. Yay, you. Uh, that's just that's just the first first thought. That was nice. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I do I do try. I do try. Uh, but as, as concept art goes, I, mean, I like how you uh, you have the, the squiggly line, as I like to affectionately call it. But I can tell it's rock. I love the transition from uh, the bright yellow to the orange, and there's some red tones into it. And I love the white around the feet. That was really well done, Sid. I'm proud of you. Anka. Bitta. So do you have any more to show us, or shall we open up for questions yet again and hopefully not be disappointed this time? <laughs> uh, that is all I've got. I've got base work, but I figure you don't need to see that. I'm just going to upload that after. Does Chelsea have anything to show? I do not know. Well, we will go to her in a second. Let's open up for questions real quick. Mr. Nelson, anybody have any questions for Miss Sid? Um, hands, hands, hands. Ooh, Wolf has his hand up. Brilliant! Yay! Wolf Yay, says Wolf. nay. Oh, I had my hand up because I wanted to share stuff. But, <laughs> sorry. But that's cool. No, no, no. no hey, that's good. We. This is what I want. I want to be able to take over the world and people's computers and share ideas, obviously. Wolf, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I have a swollen elbow, and Ty thinks I'm uh, a girl. But besides and you look that, like a zombie. I, I, seriously, no. dude, I, I still have the, the, the freaking blood and makeup all over me. I haven't had time to wash it, wash it off yet. Uh, earlier in class today, uh, you seen Nelson? Can you take over my screen real quick? Yep. Uh, you are Derek. <laughs> Let me find the rights. Here we go. Um, the six heads that I got, we've seen Sid six or several heads. She had four or five, six. She had seven. She had one more than me. I'm sorry. She's much better than I am. I'm still prettier. But uh, what if you stop that? First one. Uh, what, what, you like the first head best? Yeah, that's my favorite. All right, so... Are you leaning to uh, more of like uh, the flat type nose, or do you want the human-esque nose? Flat. I'm kind of going towards the flat too, but I like Steve's idea to do the the compromise. And Steve, are you there? Yep. Um, hold on. And, and when I saw that, I was kind of looking at that first head and blending the two. I, I that first head has some very uh, uh, bat-like qualities. That's that I really like. Cool. Okay, ideally, the human nose would come up like this, and the nostril would be like that. We can, I guess what you're talking about with uh, the, the ridge of the brow through here coming out. Well, it, that silhouette being human-esque but a little flattened like Sid's was, but then, yeah, that, that nostril being a, more of a split-type nostril that runs right up the front rather than 
being underneath. Like a gorilla? Uh, uh, kind of, yeah. Bat. Or a bat or, or dog or feline or any, any of that type where it splits straight up the front instead of uh, being underneath. I really like the really strong jawline. And that's the other thing, and I love how Wolf brought this up. More, I don't want to say a gaunt face. I just want to say a low body fat percent face. That uh, the cheekbones and uh, the the head is very prominent. Uh, maybe even okay. Mr. Ray has talked about having different zones of weather, different climates. So in the desert, you know, where you think you're going to be hot and sweaty all the time, so you would really have low body fat. In the temperate zone, you fly coconuts together because of the African swallows. You would also be kind of shallow. But if we even do a uh, like a, a winter scene, I, I want to. I see these these creatures, these aliens very muscular, very low body fat percentage because, well, that's how I see them. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, absolutely. I mean, they they live in, uh, in harmony with the land and these other species. There's not a lot of technology. And let's face it, technology makes you fat. <laughs> You're well, right. They, they don't have technology, but they do have magic that uh, kind of works like technology does or it can anyway true so i mean if uh, but, but they're not happen. sitting around eating fritos watching watching tv, TV. you know that's yeah. <laughs> so yeah they're they're in i mean you're gonna have different body types in terms of size but i would say they would all be relatively fit i like that idea so okay counterpoint allow me to be the devil's advocate here so are we going to ostracize the humans? Just a thought to plant a seed. Because I, I, I love what Star Wars did. You know, you have the really big, I'm like Jabba the Hutt dude, and like, no, I'm like superhero, different than body types. So we're going to make all the Elysians very low body fat and give the humans like the option of the, one of the meshes to being kind of a bigger boy or a bigger girl? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Would they go to McDonald's or their favorite eatery? Well, yeah. we, we might be able to do uh, things just with different races of uh, Elethians, maybe looking more different than each other than just uh, uh, the simple feature differences that uh, humans have. <clears throat> so that's interesting okay so if i catch you right because we talked about mr ray had an idea of you know, like the different tribes and stuff so are you, are you suggesting that uh okay i'm, I'm taking the map of the united states because i'm so not mr geography but like up east they look one way M the middle of the continent they look a different way out west they look something different similar yeah. but different yeah, and you know, also it it should uh, reflect the different environments a little bit. I think. I know that I strongly agree with. What do you think, Sid? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, the the water ones would be very streamlined, and I mean, they swim. They have to be. Mm -hmm. And slammy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you're thinking about in. Um, Amphibians, or uh, I don't think I said that right. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. what? Yeah, amphibious. Yeah, so so they would they would be in the water a lot, but they wouldn't live in the water. Like, what, uh, well, we're actually about about the idea of having a water level with a, a species that does live underwater, but can can survive outside of the water as well. Yeah, nobody's really said. I don't see why not. Well, you know, they, they could be like, uh, because the humans, listen, I'm a human and I have to go underwater. I have to have a breathing apparatus. And I only have X amount of, I guess, time with my oxygen. <clears throat> why not give that as a disadvantage to that particular race that, you know, hey, you can live outside of the water, but you have to go to X, Y, or Z. To, we can make it plentiful. It could be some sort of plant source that's growing up near a river or something. I don't know. It's trying to be interesting. 
but but are these Aletheans or are these uh, different a uh, different <laughs> species? I like Mr. Ray's thoughts on this. Is Mr. Ray around? Uh, yes, he is here. Do you want me to, um... Please, please. yes, sir. All right, whether you're ready or not. Surprise! Hey, Mr. Ray, we're all coming to your house, and, and we're expecting food. <laughs> okay, can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. I, I know you've been listening to us. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, like Mr. Wolf said, are these going to be different creatures? Are they going to be Aletheans? Or, I mean, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, you are the man, you are the myth, you are the legend. Well, uh, I remember last week, I believe someone showed uh, an Aletheian with webs and so on. So it was an Aletheian, and I liked that, but one that had maybe evolved a little differently. Uh you know, sort of like a Submariner in our comics. Uh, somewhat a humanoid and can be out of the water for a while, but not necessarily forever. Uh, so I think that would work. And they'd have a problem being on land for more than a set amount of time, whereas the air breathers or primary air breathers would have a problem being underwater for more than a certain amount of time. So that could be part of the game plan. I like that idea, and it, it makes sense. It's logical. Um, so we're gonna have to come up. We're gonna have to come up with an idea if, if again, this is approved. Uh, World of Warcraft, and I'm going back to that because it's huge. I played a druid, and you know I can swim as a the little water beast and breathe water. But there's also pockets of air under the water that uh, you can like stand by and, and, and breathe. You can't go anywhere else, but you can only stand there. But, I mean, it gives us ideas of what we can do in game. But are these going to be playable? I mean, con is that the concept, or not sure yet? Not sure yet. Uh, again, when Buzz gets uh, all sorted out, we're gonna, I want to present him with everything we have. And what's going to be really cool, at my plan is to talk to Mr. Busby in the next couple of days. And then when Sid, myself, and uh, Steve uh, are all at the Buzz Cave with Mr. Nelson, not only, not only are we going to party like it's 1999, but I want to present him with all this information that we have, we've gathered. And, and again, this is his baby. This is 3D Buzz. This is, this is his thing. And he's a boss, uh, driven by us, the individuals. But I want to get definite feedback from him before we can say yes, no, maybe. Uh, our job is to, right now, I, I want to say that everything's going to be a playable race. And we can start narrowing it down. Just because, you know, this is cool. It may not be great game mechanics. Nelson may come back with the egghead guys. Like, this is awesome, but we've got to concentrate over here. We can't pull resources from this. So there's going to be some give and take in everything. Yeah, one of the things that I was thinking, though, uh, I, I don't know who would want to play the race that needs to be confined to the water and can't really <laughs> play in half of the, the game. Or it would warm. suck to go to the desert environment. Oh, my God, I need an oasis. This sucks. Well, but they could be AIs as part of an adventure, or they could be dangerous. Uh, you have to get through the water, and there are um, shark-like Aletheian uh, mutants that will go after you. So, that, you know, right, and NPCs would be fun. You still have them. That would be cool. And then, who knows, in the future, I, I remember uh, there's some little potion or some little uh, artifact that you can have. And if you are an uh, alliance, it can turn you into a blood elf. If the appearance, anyway. I mean, we can get all sorts of crazy stuff like that in the future. But uh, I liked the ideas. What else do you have on your mind, Wolf? Uh, do you want to see? Yes! Yes. Um, can I quick throw in an idea here? Yes. Um, uh, maybe. Just going... <laughs> Probably, but 
Just going along with the uh, water Elysians idea, maybe the Elysians, the land Elysians, could still be playable, because I'm sure people would like to play them. And maybe the water Elysians aren't quite to terms with the Elysians that are playable, and maybe they could serve, you know, as problems for both humans and the playable Elysians. Ooh, I like that. I think that'd be great. Heck yeah. Actually, I'm not worthy. I was thinking about the same thing, having a uh, inner conflict in the races to yeah. add a little variety to the story. Well, Steve and I talked about it before, and I love his idea about an uneasy alliance because we're going back to where these <clears> – <throat> I just had a job offer sort of thing about uh, – with the Cherokee Indians doing this huge movie with – I, anyway, I can't go into like all NDA stuff, but the Cherokee Nation used to be huge, and any time Native Americans would go to war or do something, they'd come to the the, the, the nation, the tribe, say, "Hey, we want to do X, Y, or Z." And what I want us to do, I'm hoping to do, my idea to do, is have all these Elysians at different zones, different climates, to be independent tribes, and then you know they'll have a they'll have a council where they meet once ever so often. Uh, to come for a common good, but maybe some of them are warring. Maybe some of them are not getting along, because you have to remember if we're going to make a two-raced system where you have Alethians or you have humans, we're going to have to have strife, conflict breeds story. So we're going to have to have something on the Alethian side. We can't have them fighting the humans all the time uh, to to level up and your growth of their character. So I like your ideas where you're going. I'd I've been envisioning them as uh, being, I guess, more cultured and civilized or something. I, I, I mean, tribes as well, but I, I'm also thinking that uh, cities and kingdoms. I, that, I agree. I think that'd be great. And Mr. Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, you're talking about like almost a feudalistic system. Uh, but we'll, the, the key, the twist is that women will, will rule, um, uh, rule the system. So maybe they're not tribes. Maybe they're they're different, like you said, city states. Uh, and, and when we first talked about this, uh, we talked about maybe using as a a, a rough model pre-Columbian America, where you had the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Incas all of whom had very sophisticated uh, agriculture. Uh, they had cities. Uh, they had uh, the massive stone buildings. Uh, they had roads. So you can have all of that and still have a tribal structure and one that doesn't necessarily get along and, and that does fight amongst themselves. So you can have a situation where you could even have some segments of the humans join up with some segments of the Aletheans to go against some other group. Like the French Indian War. Exactly. And and what Abraham Lincoln tried to do, and a lot of people may or may not know this, but from my understanding, during the Civil War, he tried to get England to come back to invade America. Because if England would have came back to America, we'd have a common enemy to hate. So this would definitely reunite or unite all the Aletheans if the humans came. You have all these warring factions for X, Y, or Z, and then they can perceive a, a, an evil, bad, all humans are coming. And like Mr. Ray said, the French-Indian War, I mean, there's all sorts of crazy alliances. There could be corporations. Just like we have in America, let's go green, yay, let's save this. I mean, you could have like Greenpeace dudes, and I'm just t talking tongue-in-cheek come down and, and find a way to team up with the Aletheans because, you know, we don't want to destroy the indigenous life form here on this planet. And, and there's some really cool stories that can form from this. Well, in, in the original concept way back when they were first talking about this, the Earth side was an oligarchy that was run by corporations. Again, very much like tribes. They sometimes work together on some things and they fought each other like crazy on other things. If that stays in the story, that's what's going to come to Aletheia. So you're going to have within the human ranks 
people trying to ace each other out. And that's where you could get them forming these French Indian kind of alliances. Uh, if we continue along that line, which was part of the original concept. I like that. Any other thoughts? Uh, <laughs> no, I do. If I don't know if you meant him or anybody. Any anybody, anybody. What? Well, well, I just I just thought that's interesting. It, I didn't I didn't realize that uh, the women would be um, in charge. But well, if, if, we, we if, talked if, about. If, Go ahead. if it. If, if it goes that way, that's it's, it's interesting. It kind of makes uh, sense because with, with all the with the significance of being strong in the power, like physical strength is less important. So it's it's much easier to not be bullied by physical strength. So it's interesting. And again, Steve pointed out, forty nine percent of players are women, and you know they're. There's not a lot of strong female leads. Uh, this latest book that I'm working on, uh, we, we've tossed around the ideas about was the lead going to be a guy or a girl. First of all, I like drawing hot chicks. And second of all, I don't think there's enough strong female leads out there. You have the femme shep if you choose to play the femme shep. Uh, but there's besides that, there's not a lot of female leads out there. I love to empower women. And even guy, I play a girl every time I play an MMO. I'm not going to lie. I like to look at a cute butt running around. And, you know, I like to get as far away from me as possible when I play. So I, I'm going to play a chick. But why not empower women? And maybe we can make them loyal to our game because the hierarchy is a structured rule by women. Uh, Pillow as fight. As, <laughs> Stop as, that. as far as the nose go, uh, I my idea was because uh, uh, I know Zach always talked about the flat face, and we seem to be continuing with uh, wanting that kind of profile. Uh, but my my concept was that. Uh, just to get, um, just get a nose that we would find more attractive. Uh, that just the the base of the nose, the tip, uh, would be would be something that protrudes out a little bit. But they they wouldn't have the same. That that would that would be the only thing that protrudes out. Everything else you wouldn't see. Like they wouldn't have the the bridge of the nose all the way, you know, all the way up to that, uh, that would be, uh, uh, that would be flat. So that's, uh, I was thinking that that could be one workaround to, to still having a flat uh, profile, but have a little, a little bump there where a more, uh, what do you have that we might find. Show us that you did? What's that? Do you have some artwork that you can show us that you did like that? Uh, not yet. Next week. Next week. Okay. Then, then but I do next. have artwork. Okay. Um, Mr. Nelson, can you take over uh, Mr. Wolf Knightley's uh, screen, yep. please? Also, we have a Richard Gamble with his hands up. Hand up. Brilliant. So I'll jump into Wolf, and then I'll... Him, and should be good to go. Man, he really is good with the jewelry. He really is. Thanks. Holy I know nothing about jewelry. I don't know where, where it's coming from, but... <laughs> <clears throat> it's a coming from somewhere. Um, this, I, I feel this needs to be spoken about. <laughs> it's just a weird concept I had uh, uh, where um, if she was blinded, or even lost an eye. Uh, that... Because chicks with one eye are rocking cool. <laughs> Angelie Julie and Sky Hero, whatever tomorrow. She looked hot. But go ahead. Right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I was thinking that here's the stone, and uh, that she could somehow be using that stone to have um, a kind of vision, and it may not be 
something that you actually see in pictures, but just an awareness of 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 things. So I, I you know, it's kind of like an uh, the analog version of the Borg and the way set up, you know. <laughs> but it's like through magic, and I, I, I even I was thinking that that would be an interesting. Uh, thing to go with that is what if uh, a human uh, threw a flash grenade or something blinded blinded her in her uh, good eye but she would it wouldn't affect the magic eye and so that would still have um, awareness and be able to uh, make a flash to the battle that's good huh? yeah I anyway. immediately thought of like a predator vision <laughs> <laughs> where uh, you know, maybe in the case of her, other players in the area are highlighted. There's there's no hiding in a dark corner. It, yeah, it, it may be even something that you could do. You just put on this, uh, put on a helmet or something or whatever uh, to, if you, without being blind or anything, just over good eyes to be able to see in a different way. I like it. Good, good idea. Possibility. Um, yeah, it's... It, <laughs> It's an interesting. It's 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 different because it, the head slants back because of that. Uh, you have to kind of think about it differently. <laughs> so you, you look at uh, um, how humans wear crowns and 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 things, and you might get an idea, but it doesn't. It won't directly transfer over to an Aletheian unless it's unless it's maybe flat against the uh, the head or um, but uh, yeah because <laughs> because you know people wear it they would wear a crown on the topmost of their head but uh, for the Aletheans that's slanting backwards Right, so, and it needs to be able to slide on. So, well, if if you put it if you put it right on the on the top, it's gonna it's gonna be not it's not gonna be looking directly up. It's gonna be uh, slanting back, so it's gonna be a little more mm -hmm. horizontal behind their head. Yeah, and so it, so it's it's gonna have a weird. It's not gonna have the look that you were going for. Plus, you got to think about uh, they're they're already because of the shape of their. Uh, slanting back head that that, that they're already um, back heavy with their head so you, then you got this big crown on on the back there and that uh, couldn't be comfortable kind of like Princess Elmodella point five six <laughs> Metaclorians <laughs> I knew it was coming <laughs> well done Wolf I'm proud of you but, good yeah, thought that, process yeah. the the, the Good. Uh, the flip side of that is that when you do figure out kind of a way, kind of more like this, uh, to to fit it on, it it will look different, and it will look you know it will look alien, which is a plus. Yeah, you can get some really interesting silhouettes with these. But yeah, I mean, I I, I could just keep going. I think with these, I mean, just exploring different things, but. <clears throat> That's the idea of leads. What's that? Have you I ever been to Nepal? Leads. Two people talked. <laughs> Go ahead, Sid. Uh, I just said he was jewelry leads now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I expect you to design something for Kate's Middleton and Elysian's now. And, and have you ever been to Nepal, Wolf? No. You, there's just some really heavy Hindu influences in these. I don't know where you're pulling it from. But it's His very butt. Cool. <laughs> but I agree. And, and here's another um, idea that I was having um, about spots on the head. Now, the, the, the idea, what I'm thinking, and just from different um, nature stuff that I've watched and uh, um, I know I, I watched something on the History Channel about uh, dinosaurs and stuff, and I, I, it, I can't help but to think that the the shape of the head is in part um, evolved to to be something that's 
that, that Elysians will find attractive. That mm -hmm. it's a, you know it's a it's a statement. So it's uh, and I thought that this could go kind of hand in hand with that. And uh, so color spots, and then uh, you see I put little uh, red uh, uh, specks in it. And uh, and my thought process was since I already uh, since I did these little red drools that perhaps uh, uh, the, <coughs> perhaps the reason for the red drools is to kind of s s simulate uh, these specks and uh, I was also thinking that um, they probably in when they're wearing the headgear and or their <laughs> headdresses and <laughs> headgear and what, whatever they're they're wearing they, they might uh, <laughs> like braces right because they right. have good teeth and yeah, the bike. right, right. Um, but uh, that they might want to still to still show that, and and this and and some of this is is might actually be to kind of highlight that, and because um, it's what oh, mates are looking like for, that. and it's a what I like that idea. Mm -hmm. So do I. Human women put on makeup. Guys trim and shape beards certain ways. Some guys put on makeup, like Derek. And um hey 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 it's zombie makeup it's zombie makeup so so, yeah, by the way why, why wouldn't they want to accentuate what they look like just like we do yeah here's a story for you right and then we're gonna move on because I, I want to move to uh, Chelsea because we're running out of time but one of my uh, anthropology teachers in college uh, we had to read this little doodad doodad means like a paragraph um, where this guy is floating down this river, and he sees uh, this young, beautiful, naked woman taking her earrings off of her ear. And she then realizes that he sees her, and she grabs her earlobes and runs away. <laughs> well, in that certain culture, because her earlobes were uncovered, that's how she was embarrassed. And I like how Wolf's line of thought thinking was, you know, Again, I don't want to be in trouble with any of the women or feminists out there, but let's not accentuate the the bosoms, but let's work on on the forehead and the the, the markings there, and let's move culture to that area right there. What they believe beauty is, because what they believe beauty is, can really drive story and drive culture. <laughs> I said it. Can't believe I said forget the boobs. Right, I, I was thinking that that would be more erotic to them than, say, cleavage or whatnot. But you guys remember, uh, Bab was it not Babylon Five? Uh, it was a Star Trek show where Dax, you know, if you read the back of her neck with all those little bumpy things, she's like, oh, Deep Space Nine. There you go. That's it. Deep Space Nine. And it's, of course, as soon as I said, you know, Dax, and Steve's like, oh, yeah, Deep Space Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf, well done. I'm proud of you. But I do want to move on to, uh, yeah. to Chelsea right now. Chelsea, are you there? Nelson, can you get Chelsea? Um, yeah. Hello. I'm hey, here. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Wait, wait, wait. Before you start, you don't have to thank me for all the times I saved your butt last night. I mean, all the last times session. I saved you? <laughs> We're going to continue on with the lecture here. Um, what I want to do is I want to show your artwork, okay? Oh, uh, well, I don't have a whole lot this week, but I have a little bit. <laughs> I was no. mostly messing around with some tattoos and stuff. Tats are awesome. Mr. Nelson, can you take your screen, please? Yep. Maybe. Probably. And there you go. I love you, Nelson. There we are. Can we see? I can see. That's... Yeah. This was just actually a really quick one that I did today, messing with, like, uh, different <clears throat> facial markings they might paint on themselves, or maybe even certain designs would just be natural on them, kind of like the spots that, uh, I forgot his name was just talking about. Wolf. Yeah, there we go. Wolf. Looking and, very good. It, yeah. it looks very uh, forest camouflage -y. 
That yeah, was they the make point. me think of the Dalish elves from Dragon Age. Yeah, probably yeah. a little inspired yeah. by that. But yeah, that's what the idea I was going for. This would be probably someone that was found in a heavier forested area with lots of and, trees and greens. And without a, a, a silly person named Alistair, who's a girly man himself. <laughs> yeah. Then I had this other one that I think Derek and a couple other people saw on Facebook that I posted up. I with love the it. sort of darker skin and then the purple highlights. I was almost picturing her that sort of a uh, that cave area that Steve and them were talking about earlier. Face cave. Face cave. Face cave. She looks like she'd blast you into the next life. Yeah, she, this She's was sort of supposed to be the one where, oh, they have more tattoos. Maybe she does a little more with magic than physically. I like that. Yeah. That one makes me think of Mass Effect in a good uh, way. <laughs> yeah, the oh, outfit like, makes me think of Star Wars. I'd say the pose is making me think Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> the overall feel makes me feel like I should eat some food. Eat some <laughs> What? I don't I know. I'm hungry. I got my three-year-old crying in the background. So, uh, Nelson, with that, you guys keep talking. I'll be back in about five minutes. I apologize strongly. <laughs> All right. Continue. But yeah, and then I just had this last one here that I just did like five minutes before class. She looked flirtatious. Yeah. Messing with. <laughs> oh, baby. Messing with the sort of the plating that were showing up on the heads for a couple other people's drawings. I figured, well. Why wouldn't it be in other places, too, if that was something that naturally occurred on their head? Maybe they had platings on their arms or their legs in other places. I think it Don't looks good on, on the her. shoulders. Yeah. yeah. And I then, think I'm uh, dumb for not thinking of that. I yeah, like the dots. Then, as well. Yeah, the dots could be like, I don't know if they'd be, uh, maybe it's just a coloration or maybe it's sort of just a scalier area of the skin and it turned out to be a different color. Because I've I figured scaly wouldn't be too bad, considering that they already have all the plating and stuff. Yeah. Kind of yeah. looks like rocks were embedded in their skin. Yeah. Almost like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was kind of thinking. Why not? Maybe certain areas brought out a tougher skin, and that's why maybe some would have the plates and other would be more flat-skinned, like this one, with just a plain tone. Maybe she got road rash when she was young. <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking that the males would probably have uh, the, the s scales like that. To kind of, they would be a little rougher looking. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe sort of like a natural armor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, uh, it brought up another thought for me too. Maybe, maybe the Aletheans don't get this plating naturally. Maybe it's something they get from the stones that, brings all their magic maybe if they embed it to a part of their body early on over time that stone would focus purely on making their skin tougher giving them more of a natural armor or different things like that enhancing speed and stuff that's a great idea that's like socketing that, yeah. a gym yep yeah that's that's really all i got <laughs> that was quite a bit you go girl there's some great music. And don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I quit now. Yeah, I asked this girl at a bar what her sign was, and she said, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, so what does everybody think of uh, skin color? I, I, I feel like it shouldn't be human-colored skin. Yeah, that's why I've been getting all the different colors, like the the gray one here, or even the green. And it probably, yeah, I think we should have quite a few options, because, yeah. you know, it's people want to do every color under the rainbow, it seems. Should yeah. Vary, should vary from tribe to tribe, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, for different areas, uh... <laughs> Say for people that are more in a forested areas, they get more of the tones along the greens and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or the volcanic areas, maybe they get the ashier the gray and maybe some reds and stuff like that. And maybe a little, just to camouflage into the environment. Yeah. Makes sense. To blend in a little bit. Sneak up on you. 
I do like the idea that the uh, the stones in the environment they're in and their interaction mutates them towards that environment. Yeah. That, that yeah. Well, with Ray's idea of uh, the other species being able to manipulate the environment and change it to the Alethians' needs. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you see the stones then mutate them too? Yeah. That yeah, I was toying with it. They evolve. I was toying with an idea. I noticed most games will have necromancers as like an evil don't do kind of thing and maybe we could have like that one picture where it had all the gems embedded in that one guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll be like the necromancer of the game where you're not supposed to embed that many gems or something like that and that could be an enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you're not supposed to embed any, you're supposed to wear them. And you know, the necron masters embed them. And it's impossible. Yeah, they get special skills, but they're also ostracized. They don't. Yeah. They can't uh, run around in the Lithrian towns like everybody else can. Yeah, they get like yeah. Booted maybe, out. Maybe it, 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 to do that, it, it corrupts the stones. So <laughs> for some for some reason, so yeah. it's kind of a, a negative. They become unreliable. <laughs> Maybe it's part of that whole coming of age thing where you're allowed to pick, you know, the one stone that you're gonna use for the rest of your life, sort of thing, and then guys like that end up ignoring that rule. Well, yeah. true. Because mm -hmm. you can pick your take nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Exactly. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> I'm back. It needed and to be said. That, it did need to be said. It is eleven thirty six. We still have a lot of stones, no pun, unturned. This is where I like to uh, this is what I like. I like that we're really throwing some ideas together. But right now, what I want to do is open one last question to anybody in uh, in the forums right now that has not spoken. Mr. Nelson, any hands up like that? Um, no, I don't see any hands. I don't see anything in the questions panel. Uh, do we still have Richard around? He had his hand up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Richard's yeah, here. I'm still here. So, yeah, it looks like yeah, um, was, um, that's about it. Okay. Then uh, we will wrap it here at this moment. We have a lot more work to do next week. I encourage everybody to go to 3dbuzz.com, community, then to the design, and then find your niche, whether you want weapons, environments, jewelry, magic, character design. We have something open for everybody. You don't have to have a spectacular skill set. I want people with passion and ideas. We've got great art leads, except Sid. She has an attitude, but we'll we'll talk about her readjusting here very very shortly after that. You guys have a great night. I appreciate everybody being involved. Uh, Steve, I want to throw out a special thing for you tonight because on set I called you tonight. I'm like, dude, I can't go hold Nelson or buzz anybody. Please tell them to push back her class by a half hour. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate everybody pushing class back a half hour tonight because I was on set bashed, getting my face bashed in with a uh, fire extinguisher as a zombie. So with the that, album, Derek, there's always a prima donna that you got to deal with. We, we already know. And uh, would, would, would I be that prima donna? I, I didn't openly say that. Yeah, you, you kind of did, butthead. I love you, too. <laughs> Keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them. Reaching for the stars, I'm taking my basket full of toys, and I'm going to leave. But dream big, people. Uh, Art leads, we will talk. Uh, what is today? Today's Thursday. I'm going to talk all of this by uh, Monday so we can start handing out more assignments. By next week, our milestone will be we are going to nail down what the Alethians will look like. I feel we've come a long way, and we're heading in the right direction right now. Uh, Derek? Sir? Uh, could you just get my screen for just one minute to finish up? Nope, I can't, but Nelson can. Nelson, could you? I, who's that? Is that Richard? Ray. Ray. Yeah, uh, Ray. Ray. Mr. Ray. <laughs> also, I have one more question after he's done with it. Okay. Okay, can you all see it? We can. Ray playing in sculptress, nice. Yeah, yeah Ray's got a, a couple of sculpts that he is he's mm -hmm. thrown my way, and he's doing well, really, really well. Well, one of the things I've been learning um, is that 
you, you could give this character scales, all the plates, everything we were talking about. And there's another program that I got called uh, Topo, uh, uh, Topo Gun. Very inexpensive, and you can use that to create the low uh, res mesh and all of the uh, various uh, maps that you need, normal maps and uh, texture maps and so on. And in addition to that, once you have your base mesh down, you can make headdresses, uh, uh, clothing things that will uh, conform directly to that base mesh right in that program and then take them into other programs to finish them up, animate them and so on. So. Uh, Sculptress is free, Blender is free, and the program I just talked about is $100. So for 100 bucks, you have a, a whole pipeline that used to cost thousands of dollars if anybody wants to play with this. Nice. Well done, Mr. Ray. Great, great device. Uh, you were, can I? Yeah, please go ahead. You were saying that uh, you want to uh, figure out you want to get it kind of con concrete what uh, the elite ends will look like yes. just does by next week does that mean that if we come up with other ideas after that that uh, we couldn't incorporate them or change that well I always want to be I want to be like a reed in the wind uh, because we have a, we have a strong steel mesh in the wind under certain I guess strength that's going to break. We need to be able to flex and flow. But I would like to be able to, to determine what the facial structure is going to look like, whether we're going to have a flat nose, flat nose with like a semi-humid nose, and some ideas about the ears. We know what they're going to be elongated, a long, lean, beautiful creature. We know that they're going to be on their tippy toes. We know they have three toes, three fingers. We know that. What I really want to do, like Mr. Ray, he's doing some modeling. I want to be able to, all to agree on what they look like so then we can draw some Im excuse me, image planes so then we can start modeling and do some 3D meshes of what we have. And then, we, like Mr. Ray said, there's so many different programs out there that we can incorporate with. Mr. Nelson, all the programs that Mr. Ray talked about, is that okay? with what you guys are doing on, on your side? Well, virtually every single um, package out there is going to be able to export into a format that Unity understands. However, you will have to um, come up with uh, some sort of scale so that all the models are um, are scaled proportionately to each other. Okay. But that's about and it. And how do we come about that? Uh, that's something that we can discuss later once we start getting more into modeling. But I just want to okay. point out, it's, yeah, it's completely possible. All the packages he was talking about can export into something that Unity understands. Brilliant. Mr. Ray, well done. Wolf Knightley, great questions. Uh, again, I thank everybody for taking time, uh, even you, uh, Sid. <laughs> and Chelsea, mm -hmm. I'll see you on Mass Effect later on, and I'll make you cry. Steve, awesome job. Thank you for helping me out. Mr. Nelson, wow. thank you for staying extra late tonight. Everybody on 3U Buzz, go to the forums. Um, we've got some discussions going on in the forums, but I want more. This isn't my game. This isn't Sid's or Steve's or even Ty's. No, it's, it's our game. But I need your feedback. I need you to step up. There's several people here in class right now that have been here for this the fourth week and not said a word. You know who you are. I want to hear from you. Your opinion matters and your ideas hold weight and value. So uh, with that said, we'll break for tonight, and we'll come back next Thursday. Very soon, I hope to announce, with Buzz's blessing, an anatomy and physiology class, so we can, or I will teach you how to draw uh, the female figure, the, the male figure, and through that we can exaggerate with ears and elongating the head. Uh, yada 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 to create all sorts of stuff and then immediately after that we'll do a fantasy art class uh, seven day eight week course with that so I'm excited any last words everybody this is last minute word stuff go guys you had some great ideas tonight have a great week amen, amen. amen.
let me translate. He said, heck yeah, dude. Derek is awesome, and Lethal Warren sucks. Uh, no. Next. Okay, that's it. Nelson, wrap us up and take us out, baby. Okay.